Hello, pre-algebra. This is chapter 3, section 1. It's a nice review of fractions and decimals. Uh, to write a fraction as a decimal, you simply uh, have to convert the fraction like 1 fourth. Uh, if it's a number like 1 fourth or 3 fifths, well, we can easily make the denominator a 10, a 100, or a 1,000. For example, 1 fourth is the same thing as 25 over 100. So the decimal equivalent there is 0.25, or 0 0.25. Um, 3 fifths, if we multiply both by 2, that's um, 3 fifths. You can turn that into 6 over 10. Multiplying by 2, 6 tenths is the same thing as 3 fifths. And you can easily think of that as 0.6. OK, but sometimes our denominator is not easily converted into 10 or 100 or 1,000. So we simply have to divide the numerator by the denominator. And if the decimal ends or terminates, we call that a terminating decimal. And if the decimal repeats, of course, we call that a repeating decimal. So let's look at one example of each. I can't convert 8 into 10 or 100 or 1,000, so I'm going to have to divide 8 into the numerator, which is 7, and it will not go. So that's when I need a decimal, and it goes into 78 times. 8 times 8 is 64. So when we subtract 4 from 10, we get 6, and we borrowed there. So 8 into 60, that'll go 7 times. 7 times 8 is 56. Bring down our 4. 8 goes into 45 times, and then it terminates. It stops right there with a remainder of 0. So 7 eighths is equivalent to 0 0.875, a terminating decimal. Maybe I should have made that green, but OK, terminating decimal. Let's do the repeating decimal in green. 9, I know it's a repeating decimal because it's divided by 9. I actually already know this answer is going to be 0.4 repeating. But let's show you that it does work out. So 9 won't go into, z into 4, so we have to put our 0. 9 goes into 40, 4 times, and 4 times 9 is 36. And then it gives me another 40, goes 4 times, 36. It's going to give me another 40. And as you see, it's going to keep going on and on and on and on. So whenever it, it's a 9, it terminate. I mean, it repeats one digit. Had it been um, 4 over 99, then it would repeat two digits. So um, that's a good a good one to remember. When it's divisible by 9, you know it's a repeating decimal. Divisible by 99, it's double digits repeating. Okay, but that is not the problem that we're dealing with here. So 4 ninths is equivalent to 0.4 repeating. All right, let's move down to the exercises. It says write each fraction as a decimal, so 20. Hey, that one, we could make it into 100. So let's do that. Instead of dividing 20 into 7, let's turn that into 100. We need to multiply by 5. So 7 times 5 is 35. 20 times 5 is 100. So 0 0.35 is what the decimal form would be. 2 over 11. Now that one I can't make into 100. So we'll divide 11 into 2. Uh, and it has to be 20 because it won't go into 2. So let's make that 1 times. So it's 11. 11 from 10 is 9. We borrowed. So 90. So it'll be 8. 88. And that'll go once again. Oh, wait a minute. Once again. So that's going to be 11. And that's going to end up with 9. So it looks like we're going to have two digits repeating. So when I bring down my 90, it goes 8. So it's going to keep going in that pattern. So it's so 2 elevenths is equal to uh, 0 0.18 with the 18 repeating. 1, 8, 1, 8, 1, 8, 1, 8. Hey, and this is going to be 0 0.5 repeating because it's divisible by 9. If you don't believe me, we can check it. Let's do that. Just to show you, 9 goes um, 5 times, which is 45. 
which is going to give us a 50, which will go 5, which is 45, which will give us a 50, and you can see how that pattern will keep on going. So that's the answer for this one. And for that one, I always like it when you circle or put a box around your answers. Okay, fractions and decimals. Now let's compare fractions and decimals. Which is larger? A calculator sure would come in handy right here. Um, and so for the sake of time, I'm probably finished with asking you all to leave your calculators at home. You can bring your calculators starting um, tonight. You can get your calculator out and check right along with me. So if you divided 3 by 8 on your calculator, you get 0 0.375. And here we have 0 0.28. So which is larger? 0 0.375 on the number line. 0.28 is going to be about right here, and 0.375 is going to be here, so if it's to the right, the number to the right is always the larger number. Okay, so as you use your calculator, you can check, um, you can work the exercises, but let's do this last one together. So we have a negative 0.37. And when we divide 4 by 11, don't forget that it's also negative, 0 0.36. So when two numbers are negative, the bigger number is smaller. So negative 0 0.36 is going to be um, the greater value. Let's look at where those would be located on our number line. Negative 0.37. Negative 0.37 is right here and negative 0.36 is here. Notice it's getting closer to zero. It's to the right. So we are correct um, that negative 0.37 is less than negative 0.36. All right, I'm going to let you use your calculator and answer um, the following exercises on your own. So pause here and answer those exercises, but come back because I'm going to go ahead and start talking about section 3-2. So don't forget, come back um, to hear the second portion of this video. All right. All right. The real number system, section 3-2, um, we are talking about rational numbers. Everything that you did in section 3-1 were numbers that could be written as a ratio. If you can make them into a fraction, or if they are a terminating decimal or a repeating decimal and you can make those into a fraction. Remember the word ratio is the root word of rational numbers and a ratio is nothing more than a fraction like three-fourths is a fraction or a ratio. And we have um, gone over this Venn diagram in class but let's talk about it one more time just to make sure that you know how to fill in all the parts. Um, so we're talking about the real number system. Real numbers. Within real numbers there are two categories. The first is what we were talking about on uh, section one, rational numbers. And then there's also something called irrational numbers. And the most popular irrational number is, is pi. Pi is the most popular irrational number. Um, everybody knows pi. It's 3.14159 dot dot dot. It keeps on going. It has no pattern. Pi is an irrational number. Another irrational number you may not be as familiar with is something like the square root of 2. If you punch the square root of 2 in your calculator, it turns out to be 1.414213 dot dot dot. There is no pattern. I cannot write the square root of 2 as a fraction or a ratio. I cannot write pi as a fraction or a ratio. So it's not rational. It's irrational. Okay, so we're not going to spend a lot of time on irrational numbers this year. Um, but we will do some with square roots. So let's come back over to our rational numbers. So realize they're both real. Irrational and rational are both real numbers, um, but there's a whole nother, rational numbers have a whole nother uh, Venn diagram within a Venn diagram. Um, let's start in the innermost circle where we have what we call either counting numbers 
or rational, uh, not rational, counting numbers or natural numbers. So counting numbers, when you teach someone how to count, you start with one. So a good example of counting numbers, one, two, three, dot, dot, dot. Okay, from counting numbers, we go to whole numbers. And I've told you about the whole numbers. I always want you to remember that that includes zero. Then one, two, three, four, and all your counting numbers. So the difference in counting numbers and whole numbers is that zero right there. And then within whole numbers, uh, there's integers. Not within, but um, outside of whole numbers, there's integers. So it's zero, one, two, three. Uh, but then there's also the negatives. Remember, we just finished adding and subtracting integers, multiplying and dividing integers. That means we were also doing negative numbers, not just the positive numbers. So integers. And then outside of integers is the whole circle of rational. So are our integers rational? Yes. Are integers whole? No. Are whole numbers integers? Yes. Um, are counting numbers integers? Yes. Are integers counting numbers? No. When I say the word integers, that means that there's negative numbers involved and there are no negatives in counting and in whole. So on your paper that you have, there are some numbers that they're wanting us to uh, place them where they belong in within the rational numbers Venn diagram. So the first number is negative 0.08. I can write negative 0.08 as a fraction. It'll be negative, but it's negative 8 over 100. If I can write it as a fraction, then it's a rational number. The next number, B, is 19. 19 would be a number that I'd call a counting number. So it's not only counting, but it's whole, and it's an integer, and it's rational. So I would put it all the way in the innermost circle of counting numbers. Now the, the Venn diagram on your paper only has whole numbers. Well if it's inside counting, it's inside whole numbers. What about 8.28228222228? That would fall under irrational. 8.28228222228 dot dot dot. There's a pattern but it's not one that we could call repeating. It definitely has a pattern going, but it's not like 2828282828. Therefore, I cannot make that into a fraction. If it's not a repeating decimal, it is not uh, rational. It cannot be made a fraction or a ratio. And the last one is negative 8. Now, before I get in too big of a hurry, negative 8, it's not counting and it's not whole. It's got to be an integer because it's negative 8. So negative 8 falls in. So negative 8 is an integer. It falls into this category of integers because it's negative. So is it rational? Yes, it is. So under negative 8, you would say it is an integer and it is rational. So on your exercises 1 through 15, I would like for you to tell me what all categories um, each of those numbers fall into. And don't forget to add counting numbers. That is not listed on your sheet. And I will expect you to know the difference between counting numbers and whole numbers for our future um, test. All right, that's all I have for today. Don't get in too big of a hurry and have a great day.